what is the big atlas weekend so follow up to my last bird video call out for bird nerds <clears throat> citizen scientists contributing breeding bird evidence you're not a bird you're just a bird brain the big atlas weekend is this coming uh weekend june the 20 23 24 and it's just a big push in the peak breeding season to gather as much breeding evidence as possible. And um, some of you wondered if, if your state or province has a similar program running to Ontario's. And I didn't previously know, but now I know the answer is yes. Um, North Carolina is in a five-year project right now. They apparently are one of the last eastern states to do a breeding bird atlas. Um, Puerto Rico, I think, is in their second or first round of, of breeding bird atlas. Ontario is in their third. Uh, Maryland is, is in. Uh, New York is in an atlas year. So it sounds like depending on when atlases uh, began and how every 20 years they run another one. So uh, some, some states and provinces are in their third Atlas, some are in their second and some are in their first. Newfoundland Labrador, Labrador is in a breeding bird atlas right now. Uh, so lots of, lots of birding opportunities and, um, and some friendly competition. So racking up the uh, bird counts, gathering breeding bird evidence, all that counts as uh, points or gets you into draws for some sweet prizes. So I'm planning to <coughs> come out hit some uh, somewhat more remote squares in my area um, which uh, obviously if you've been watching this channel it's exactly the kind of thing I like to do get out into some remote squares uh, go birding not bird hunting but it's kind of like it kind of like treasure hunting uh, plus there's the added competitive factor and it looks a lot like this so you zig and I this morning we're just out Cruising down an old logging road. There are some uh, point count locations here, so I'm going to go and do a uh, point count in a minute. And I'm doing a traveling checklist on the way there. So I've got uh, I've got my GPS with me. I've loaded up some maps on my phone. Um, and while I walk, my brain's doing two things. So it's talking to you guys, but I'm also listening to all the birds as I'm walking and then writing down a checklist of them and listening to frogs. There's a lot of frogs calling as well. <sighs> what do you hear, Ziggy? You're a black Bernian warbler? <laughs> a viri? A red-eyed vireo? An alder flycatcher? A white-throated sparrow? Chestnut-sided warbler? A green frog? A mink frog. Oh, that was... What was that, Ziggy? It's funny, she's not on camera, but she's looking real confused at the parts. And, uh... The uh, mink frogs, which make that cut-cut noise. They really, uh... That sound really catches her ear. White-throated sparrow again. So, um, if you're interested in birding or learning about birding, you should definitely get in contact with a local naturalist club or look up some information for a breeding bird atlas in your state or province. And I know for me, and I mentioned this before, it kind of fills a gap between um, hunting seasons. Uh, not that birding is just a hunting fill-in for me, but it really appeals to me 
to go out and spend time outdoors looking for birds, gathering evidence about their breeding, so trying to, trying to find their nests, or observe their breeding behaviors, courtship displays, distraction displays. Um, a few days ago I was out with Ziggy and uh, she flushed a ruffed grouse, which did a full on broken wing display, uh, distracted her, took her on this big wild goose chase through the woods, and then Ziggy was completely unaware that there was, you know, six or a dozen little uh, baby grouse there. I got to see some of them because um, I knew what was going on. But uh, pretty cool to see. I also recently found a goshawk nest, a northern goshawk nest, with, with young in the nest and the adults were dive bombing us, so that was cool as well. Um, found an antler the other day. So lots of great little memories and good finds. And doesn't take much to do it. A field guide, a notebook, a pair of binoculars, um, a camera. There's a lot of good online resources. I recently downloaded the Merlin app, which identifies birds that are calling as long as you're close enough to them. And it works surprisingly well. And so that's what I'm out doing today. So I got another spot to stop at here because there's lots of birds calling, birds alarming, and uh, I can't use my binoculars when I'm hanging onto this camera, so I'll be back. So Ziggy pretty much just runs and explores the whole time I'm birding, which is maybe an advantage and a disadvantage. Oh, I heard a northern perula warbler, I gotta add that to my list. Um, however, she'll do things like stir up these two white-throated sparrows. You can hear them making a racket here. They're not too happy about her being here. And that's an agitated behavior. They're making all their little alarm calls. So that's an, a, a breeding code that indicates that it's fairly probable that they have a nest here. And that's, that's why they're making a racket. Are you trying to outrun the bugs? Hey, okay. you trying to trying to outrun the bugs? I don't have to. I brought my thermosel. We'll carry on. So the point count locations in each square are usually roadside point counts, and then you're encouraged to do a few off-road counts as well in certain habitat types. But <clears throat> because the points were generated. Years ago, for the other breeding bird atlas, some of the road locations aren't really road locations anymore. So this, for example, started as a logging road, and then there was a fork in the road. And although this might have been a pretty good road 20 years ago, um, it's grown in now, and it's basically just a moose path. And this is part of the charm, trying to find these sites and collect that data so comparisons can be made from one atlas cycle to the next. And you never know what you'll find when you're out here. Lots of moose tracks so far. Um, a little lake back here that I'd never really considered, but uh, when I was looking at the satellite imagery, it looks like it might be a good spot to come and do a little bit of trout fishing. So this is one of the square maps that I've printed off and all those numbers are point count locations that should get done in the five year period. So you can see the ones with the circles are ones that I've already completed and then uh, all the ones without circles are the ones that I have yet to do. And in addition to those point counts, the target of the atlas is to complete 20 hours of birding in each 10 kilometer square over the five year project. So um, because of COVID, I didn't do any of the birding in the first two years of the Atlas, even though I intended to, just had other things on my mind. Um, 
but now I'm back in it. There are three years left this year and the two following years and looking to get some good some good effort in over that time. Cover off as many of these squares as I can since I'm adventurous and I can happily get into some places where other people might not wish to go. And you can bet that while I'm out here trying to find all these point count locations on all these old little logging roads that I'm also scouting fishing spots, fall hunting spots, mushroom picking spots, foraging spots, and making note of things like blackberry patches and little odd trails that take you to little puddle lakes that are worth trying. So it's been worth it so far. I do quite like this and I uh, hope some of you are inspired to get out there and um, do some birding. It's not just an old person's hobby. I've been doing this since since I was a uh, university student, I guess. Just a little while ago now. You're like, yeah, Jeremy, you are old, so it is an old person's hobby. But it's not. Oh, gross. You always find a mud hole or a puddle right before we get back to the car, don't you? Okay. Nice little bridge here. Look at you, you're soaking wet. Hey, you're soaking wet. Keeping the bugs off. Cool. Well, hopefully you like the bird thing because I'll probably have a few more bird videos over the course of the season. Um, I should do a homestead update soon. Some catch and cook speckled trout. Bunch of other stuff coming up on the channel. But today's a bird day. Well, a big white bear just ran across the road in front of me. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, let's see. Moose tracks, moose tracks. It's just in there somewhere. There's his tracks. So there's a big swamp here. And that bear just popped out of the shrubbery right in front of me. And then it's not super clear, but there's four tracks there. Four tracks there because he just came running across the road. There's my tire track. A couple more bear tracks here and here. And he's in the bush somewhere. which is actually uh, very close to where I was going to go in the bush. I was going to park right here and walk in. But only if there is a little side trail. I'm trying to access one of these um, hard to get to point count locations. What do you think of that? Hey, what do you think of that? Get your nose out of my camera. There's a sandhill train, sandhill crane track. I guess I can add that to my my evidence. I don't just have to see a bird or hear it. But what I'm really interested in uh, in this sand pit are these holes over here. It looks like possible kingfisher nests, but it also looks like somebody's been digging into them. So maybe there's predated nests here. I'll show you what I mean. Right over here. Hey. Hey. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. This is... Hey. 
Leave it. Leave it. Get out. Um, these are little fox tracks here, so there's definitely, definitely been something in here. You can see that there are claw marks around this one as well. Somebody's been digging there. So, I wonder if that's what that was in there after a bird nest or just in there after some other little burrowing animal. I decided not to take Ziggy into the bush where that bear ran across the road. There wasn't a good trail there anyway. I was looking at the satellite map and I, I think that point count, maybe it used to be on a logging road 20 years ago or 40 years ago, but it's gonna be a bushwhack to get in there. So I'm gonna drive down this road, which I've never been down before. Um, and I'm gonna access a couple of roadside point counts and hopefully also be able to stop at some ponds or uh, swamps and do some birding there as well. And kind of just probably gonna wrap up my morning soon here.